mainstream historians will tell you that the Great Pyramid of Giza was a glorified tomb for the Egyptian pharaohs. The only monument left of the original Seven Wonders of the World, this structure was created with impeccable mathematical precision and is a unique, mysterious feat of construction and of engineering. There's only one problem. The Great Pyramid has none of the characteristics of tombs, including extravagant artifacts, ornate wall art, sealed entrances, elaborate coffins, or even mummies themselves. It was, however, built with unique materials, the same materials that are used today for electrical conductivity. These facts are leading more and more historians to believe the pyramids may have had a far more useful purpose. The Pyramid of Giza was not at all a tomb, but a power plant, generating and transmitting electricity to the civilization surrounding it. Impossible? Join the universe inside you for a closer look. To start, it's important to comprehend the tremendous effort that went into creating these monuments. The pyramids of Giza are among no less than 118 of these structures in Egypt alone, and that doesn't even include those pyramids in other parts of the world. Given our current understanding of how early civilizations built their monuments, it would have taken no less than 20 years to build these so-called tombs, and that's if no less than 20,000 workers worked daily. To this day, historians still can't prove exactly how or when they were built. This leads us to ask, what resting place for the dead could possibly be so important that it would warrant such phenomenal effort, time, and precise engineering? Even without knowing that they have nothing in common with regular tombs, you only need to stand before them to realize that's a lot of work for a cadaver. Naturally, we make conclusions based on the assumption that ancient civilizations were more primitive than us. But what if intellectual evolution isn't always linear? Can advanced technology be lost and rediscovered centuries later? Is it possible that an ancient culture had knowledge of and used electrical power? To know for sure, let's look at another case where technology of power generation appears to have been used and then forgotten. We know Edison and Tesla brought electricity into common use moving into the 20th century. Yet, in Iraq in 1934, three artifacts were found together, a ceramic pot, a tube of copper, and a rod of iron, which, when combined with a liquid acid, can be used to create chemical reactions that produce an electrical charge. Known as the Baghdad or Parthian battery, these materials date back 2,000 years. Ten years after their discovery, someone using grape juice with similar materials successfully generated a few volts of electricity. This process has since been demonstrated on the Discovery Channel's program Mythbusters where lemon juice activated the electrochemical reaction between the copper and the iron, producing four volts of electricity. Nowadays, you can simply search online to find instructions on how to create your own battery using these chemical principles. But historians have long assumed that thousands of years ago there was no knowledge of this technology, that this archaeological find is mere coincidence, even though we've long marveled over artifacts with intricate gold plating, which requires electricity to be created. Quite simply, energy generation happens as a result of simple chemical properties and can be done by anyone with four basic materials. So, here are some important facts about the structure and the materials of the pyramid. For starters, it contains angled tunnels which lead not only into the pyramid, but deep underground, to areas claimed still to be unexplored. What tomb needs a shaft directed into the earth? We also know that centuries ago, 
There were enormous swivel doors that weighed no less than 20 tons. But miraculously, it was so well engineered, it could be moved to enter with a push of a hand. Since no Egyptian tomb has ever been found to be deliberately accessible, what was their interest in continuing to visit the mummies? Or could such a door have served the purpose of perhaps containing and insulating the space inside? Though you'd almost never know it, the Great Pyramids of Giza were once covered in white polished limestone, referred to as casing stones. The cuts made in this reflective stone were angled perfectly, so it would have a smooth, flat appearance. This would have made the giant structures brightly reflect the light of the sun like a mirror. It also would have made perfect insulation inside the structure. A large earthquake in 1303 disrupted the casing stones, and they were removed to use on other structures. Today, all that remains is the inner core of the pyramid. The image of the incredible amount of light that would have reflected from the monument raises curiosity, as does the reason for the insulation. Was there a desire to draw attention to their dead? To keep mummies warm or cool, or perhaps something else? Next, the material, dolomite, was used on the inner surfaces. Dolomite is known to increase electrical conductivity directly relative to the amount of pressure on it. High pressure creates more electrical current. Next, lining the passageways and underground tunnels of the pyramids is granite, which is slightly radioactive. Granite contains high amounts of quartz crystal with metal, and it's a well-known conductor of piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity occurs as a result of stress or pressure on the quartz as demonstrated by the wristwatches, which can be charged simply by rapidly shaking them. This granite actually ionizes the air inside the pyramid, creating a chemical reaction which, again, increases the conductivity of electricity. When such electrons are given the chance to bypass sections of rock via metal wire, quite large currents can flow. Another important material used to construct them is the mysterious mortar, half a million tons of it, which holds the giant stones in place. Though it's been analyzed many times, modern technology has yet to exactly recreate this gypsum, which comes from sediment. This gypsum can withstand tremendous pressure and astoundingly is even stronger than the stones themselves. Clearly, it's contributed to keeping the monument intact for thousands of years. Could there be another reason why they used a material which could withstand such high pressure? So, limestone, dolomite, granite, supposedly constructed for a tomb, are, in fact, analogous to the exact materials we use to make electrical wires. They also share a relationship with pressure, which increases their electroconductivity. Just northwest of the Great Pyramid is the Serapeum. Here there are 20 huge granite boxes, each weighing 100 tons. Classic Egyptologists say these are coffins. Yet the granite here came from 500 miles away, and each box is so large and so heavy that there's no possible way it could fit through the existing tunnels and entrances. These supposed sarcophagi were therefore somehow built into the structure with such precision, they are within a ten thousandth of an inch of being perfectly flat. In the meantime, any electrical engineer will explain that a container serving as an energy capacitor or battery must be made entirely of the same substance, so there's no interruption in the magnetic field. Could these boxes be just that? If so, there's a centuries-old granite sarcophagus on display in an Egyptian museum that's thought to be unfinished. Unlike those in the pyramids, this one's cracked, suggesting that perhaps it wasn't unfinished, but simply abandoned, because the crack which occurred would have interrupted the magnetic field, 
permitting it from successfully serving its purpose. So there is clear evidence to support the possibility of an electrical use. Since these supposed sarcophagi are clearly way too large for a human being, the accepted theory is that they were, yes, believe this, bull coffins for the pharaoh's prized bulls. Makes you wonder who came up with the bull coffin theory. To add to the mystery, in 1993, a mysterious and inaccessible room was discovered after remaining hidden for thousands of years. Appearing to have deliberately been concealed by the structure's engineers, the room came to be called the Queen's Chamber and was finally explored in 2011 with a small remote camera to reveal a long-lost mummy? Hardly. It contained carefully crafted copper wire. And more importantly, there were instructions painted as symbols onto the floor, which appeared to show a clear wiring diagram. Look at any battery, from those used in large power plants to the smallest pellet batteries in wristwatches, and you'll see that they require a metal, such as copper, to create the chemical reaction known as potential difference. You can run an electric current through copper wire, and the coil will produce a short-range magnetic field. At a second coil, and the power is transferred from one coil to the other, a windowless room with copper wirings could create a higher potential on one wall, which transfers energy to the lower potential on the other wall consequentially releasing electromagnetic energy into the confined space of the so-called Queen's Chamber. Sadly, these wires have since disappeared entirely, and mainstream Egyptologists claim there's no functionality whatsoever to this room, as they also claim there's no functionality of anything in this structure beyond the ways it serves as a tomb. Good place to note, however, that the foremost Egyptologist, Zahi Hawes, was indicted for theft of Egyptian antiquities. It could still be argued that the electrical materials used to construct the Great Pyramid are simply coincidental, because an energy generator still requires a catalyst from another source. Perhaps, then, this explains why the pyramids are geographically located over a powerful natural generator, underground rivers and aquifers. Physioelectricity could be harnessed from the power of the current as the water flows, and it has been proven that thousands of years ago, the Nile River passed directly by where the structures now stand. Of course, this brings in a debate about the age of the pyramids themselves, along with the weathering on the nearby Sphinx, indicating that the monuments are actually double the age they're currently assumed to be. Perhaps that would explain why there's no mention of the pyramids or their creation in any of the Egyptian writings. So if water was a source of power, it would have traveled up the limestone based on the principle of capillary action, which happens when a small area of a substance that gets wet absorbs into the entire area of that substance. So water flowing near or underneath the pyramid could have been absorbed as it passed over the limestone even traveling upward to the top of the structure. The quartz in the tunnels of the pyramids would subject to the stress or vibration, creating piezoelectricity. The high force, speed of the rising water, and the pressure would be analogous to filling a syringe, generating electromagnetic energy within the structure by the materials within it, and conducting it upwards to the now missing capstone. But why? The geographical location of the pyramid may give us some clues. It is located exactly at a point which magnifies the electromagnetic forces on the planet, where telluric currents are at their strongest. There's an electromagnetic field at the bottom of the pyramid, which would rise to the upper layers with these chemical reactions. We don't know for sure what capped the pyramid, but there is speculation that it may have been gold, explaining, of course, why it's long since been missing. If it were gold, this could have created a conductive path for energy to be directed upwards, high into the ionosphere. 
If superconductive materials were used to create this monument for energy, then the potential for something even more amazing might have been possible. Wireless electricity. Sound far-fetched? One bold and extraordinary man swore this was possible, and he may have showed us how. We know of Nikola Tesla as the solitary genius responsible for the electric engine, radio, laser, radar, and for creating a tremendous competitive spirit in Thomas Edison. We know Tesla sought above all to serve mankind. In fact, despite his extraordinary contributions, he's scarcely known or credited for his genius. At the 1893 World's Fair, Tesla transmitted electricity naturally to a light bulb he held in his hands. And he created the Tesla coil, which is used more today for show than for the function it was intended to serve. Most importantly, we know that Tesla claimed adamantly that he had perfected the method of harnessing and transmitting free wireless energy using the electromagnetic nature of the planet. In a patent Tesla filed in September of 1897, he claimed that at 30,000 feet altitude, there's a stratum of rarefied air that would conduct electric currents at high voltages. In this proposed system was a transmitter which would transmit millions of volts into the atmosphere. Then he had something receive the electricity and reduce the voltage to a convenient potential to be used by consumers. In an experiment the last week of July in 1903, nearby residents claimed to have witnessed Tesla successfully conduct his experiment at the Warden Seif Tower, while Tesla himself, sharing his new method of conductivity, said that it lit up the night sky as if it were a giant fluorescent tube. It's even been said that he successfully wirelessly transmitted pictures and sounds. Though all of his work has been mercilessly destroyed, this cannot be proven. Sadly, Tesla's technology was confiscated shortly after his death. He died in poverty and the US government destroyed his tower, claiming it was being used by German spies. Had Tesla succeeded in his mission, the distribution of power on this planet would have been very different today. Compare Tesla's technology to the pyramids, the location, height, and electromagnetic materials. We've seen induction between copper wires work for short distances. For a long distance transfer, the same principle can be applied when acoustic energy is converted to kinetic energy and the frequencies match. The way an opera singer can shatter a glass when the sound wave he is singing matches the resonant frequency of the glass. So if there's a magnetically oscillating current and you create a second possessing the same frequency, the wireless transmission can pass through solid materials and through long distances. The frequency which would have been released from the pyramid would have to have been matched in the surrounding area. Perhaps this would explain the obelisks the tall monuments which could be acting as receivers, particularly if there's a quartz stone at the top of them. This would also explain the ancient carvings in Egypt, which so clearly indicate light sources, it's boggling to think anyone would even argue it. In the Hathor Temple, the Dendera light is one such image. It perfectly resembles modern electrical technology, showing a wire inside of a bulb-like area and a box which appears to be a receiver. Across from this carving is a similar image, but the system appears to be falling into the hands of a reptilian-looking being, as though it's a warning of the potential to abuse this technology. Mainstream historians scoff and make more primitive conclusions, but still, the pyramids show no sign of soot from flame torches. Instead, there are multiple carvings which show these antenna-like objects that appear to be a transmitter. Near another object, shaped like the famous symbol, the Ankh, which appears to be the receiver. Given all this, it seems so much more believable that the Great Pyramid functioned using the same principles and conditions as Tesla sought to demonstrate, that they conducted and directed electromagnetic energy into the ionosphere, where it generated and transmitted electricity wirelessly.
to receivers within the civilization. We've long believed that the pyramids were just tombs, but this theory raises more questions than it answers. Why do they have nothing in common with other tombs? Why the unique construction materials made to build it, including the very materials required for conducting power? Why the oversized granite boxes proven to have never contained any mummies? Or the ones that are clearly too large for humans? Why the alignment with the North Pole, the 20-ton swivel doors, intricate tunnels and chambers, shafts, and areas still yet to be discovered? Why is there no soot from fire torches anywhere inside the structure? And why do the tunnels protrude deep into the earth? These mysteries still elude our understanding. But more and more people are accepting the possibility that the Great Pyramid of Giza had a more important function than we understand. We know there is a heightened electromagnetic measurement around the pyramid that's equivalent to that made in an electrical storm. We also know that if you look at them from space, you can see that they're actually eight-sided, not four-sided and that there are strange heat spots observable only with special equipment. They have unique electric materials, including copper and a design that suggests high pressure and water power. They have a powerful magnetic structure and placement over the telluric currents. They're aligned with the stars and the unique art of the area shows clear depictions of wired light sources. All these things suggest there's a lot more to this story than we've been told. All these circumstances make the likelihood high that the pyramid was created to be a compact energy generator and a broadcasting system that transmitted electricity wirelessly. The implications for this understanding of electrical power by an ancient culture is huge. It would rewrite history as we know it. Do you think that free energy could be transmitted wirelessly around the world? And whether or not you do believe that, do you think that if it really could do that, we would actually know about it? Thank you for watching, and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you're new, please hit subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of future releases.